Welcome back to another episode of our Eagle Perspective podcast. I'm Mike Siciliano, Dean of Students of the Upper School. I'm joined today by two legends at Santa Fe Christian, two mm. people who have been here for a while, who I've gotten to work very closely with for a long time, Amy Kennard and John Litz. Welcome to you both. Thank, Thank you. you. Good to be here today. So I know probably everybody listening has heard lore of each of you already, but just mm. in case there are some some newcomers, um, why don't you just take a moment to share a little bit about yourself, your journey at SFC, how long you've been here, and what your roles are on campus. Cool. Great. Go ahead. Go I'll ahead. go first. Uh, started my journey here at Santa Fe Christian as a 13-year-old high school freshman many, many years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, had the privilege of spending four years of high school here, graduating, loving it, and then coming back uh, a little bit later as a teacher in 2000. So this will be my 23rd year teaching here. Um, have three kids that have, one's gone through, two still here, and love being able to call myself teacher, alum, parent, and passionate lover of Santa Fe Christian. And I have to say a couple things. So first of all, you first came back as a summer camp counselor. Very true. Very of true. Which I was a member. Of I mean, your we can bring camp. out the video. We can bring <laughs> out the video if you a want. Video oh, of, of the Olympics on oh, day five. Man. Absolutely. Okay, let's not, I'm sorry I went there. <laughs> uh, number two, I, I feel like we need to take a moment. So we're now three years into this particular podcast. But you know the origin of this podcast. I'll just say it's not the first time you and I have been on a podcast together. It is not. It is not. The other one, we weren't here sitting together. We were more than six feet apart. Yes. We had no clue what Mm -hmm. we were doing. Mm -hmm. So just to let people in, when in 2020, when the pandemic happened, there was the big shutdown and we told the kids like, hey, we're going to close the school for three (laughs) weeks. Yes, they're very excited. Back in three weeks. Right. Which which ended up, of course, being a lot more. Mm -hmm. And you in particular were like, what how do we create a Mm -hmm. little bit of community while everyone's gone? So it's not just like there's no kind of Santa Fe connection. So we did our podcast. Do you remember what it was called? We did. I don't, but I know okay. it was you, myself, and Matt Corsaro right. in our own homes. Yep. And, and like over, like on a laptop, uh-huh. some recording thing. Do it. it was called Quarantine. Quarantine. That's and I think correct. you had the name on that, right? That's I'm not going to take so. credit I for it. So. Yeah, of course I yes, had the name. Of course. Yeah. Yes. But Matt, um, Matt might claim uh, that one for so himself, Matt, too. So Matt, by the way, was like an amazing host, yeah. as were you. It was great. I think the only reason I ended up doing this is because you guys are busy with your teaching jobs, <laughs> and they were like, Mike will probably do it. Uh, I remember, the, the thing I remember is the serial countdown, mm-hmm. like the, the top serial competition. Where you were completely mm-hmm. wrong with your opinion no, on that cinnamon one. Cinnamon Toast Crunch sure. is oh, number gosh. one. It's it's a fact. Yeah. It is 100%. Yeah. What did you pick? I don't even remember because it was so oh, outrageous. Oh, I'm a Frosted Flakes sort of girl. Frosted oh, Flakes. So, I'm yeah. Kind of it's just, I, yeah. You're, just, you're not that bland. It's oh. just... Come on. It's sugar cereal, but still with some nutritional value. It's perfect. Uh, I mean, that is no nutritional value. It's cornflakes with a little sugar on top. Okay. Okay. I do okay. remember being a little bit invested in that, just kind of watching and being disappointed. Yeah. Was was what was number one? Was uh, Lucky Charms was up there in the Lucky top Charms three, right? was up there. Yeah. yeah, is that your number one? That, that'd it's, probably be that, number like, one. That's yeah. a solid choice for people who are wrong, but understandably so. Thank you, thank yeah. you for understanding so, that. So yeah. good segue to mm-hmm. John Litz. Uh, yeah. So tell us about how you came to Santa Fe and what you do here. Yeah. So a quick question because I'm 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 putting together some pieces here. What year was what, were, what years did you start? When did you start Santa Fe? Uh, as a student right, in 88, yeah, well, graduated 88. in 92, came back as a teacher in 2000. But the journey yeah. began in 88. And for you? Started in 91. 91. As a fourth okay. Yeah. So I graduated high school in 90. Okay. Okay. And I want to say that it was... Not at Santa Fe, might I add. No, I just, just want to make Fe. sure people don't That's think true. you're one of us. The only two alumni That's are No, yeah. definitely not. Definitely not. <laughs> but I was local, and uh, my father, who was a pastor, picked up a side hustle uh, working nights at the as part of the custodial staff <laughs> here. How did I not know this I story? And I would either. come through during the summertime. I'd kind of join him on the evenings and do like help him with the trash cans and stuff like that yeah. in the classrooms. And I... It had to have been uh, probably 85, 86. Wow. So, so you have a legitimate Santa Fe history? I do so have a legitimate. So, I mean, the and, pool and, was and still prior here. prior to us. All the, so, so you're arguing you were I first. Know. I am. I am. Okay. Although I, I'm not an alum. so I, I, I appreciate the argument, <laughs> yeah, though. Yeah. That's but anyway, uh, I've been teaching here for, for 20 years. I just finished my 20th and uh, started actually coaching football two years before I started teaching. Came in as an English teacher in seventh grade. 
and then transitioned after a couple of years into Bible. So I've been doing Bible for about 18 years now. Okay. And which is my first love. Yeah. And yeah. and both of you are here today. I probably should have <laughs> said this earlier. They're going to be mad at me later. I didn't introduce this right. But we're going to talk about chapel today. Mm -hmm. And you two are two of the three leads in upper school chapel, mm -hmm. uh, responsible mm -hmm. basically for planning and executing all of our chapels, correct? Correct. Yeah, sounds correct. Yes. Okay. Correct. I'm going to start with a question that it might seem like a, a silly question, but it's good sometimes just to, to verbalize these things. Mm -hmm. Why do we do chapel? Mm -hmm. Like what's the purpose of chapel for our students? I really believe the purpose of chapel is to give students the opportunity for their faith to grow. I mean, it's nice and simple, and there are lots of different tidbits that go with that, but we want their faith to grow here, just as we want their intelligence to grow and their social skills to grow and their relationships to grow. We want their faith to grow. So it's to give the opportunity for that to happen. And specifically in a corporate setting, because mm -hmm. ideally their faith is growing in every class they have, even whether it's Bible or chemistry or whatever it is. Yeah. But specifically here, they have an opportunity to for corporate worship. And I, and and to be a, a part of things, you know, in, in uh, the book of Hebrews, it says uh, that we, you know, should not put off meeting together, you know, and there's something about uh, being together as a body. And so they get to do that at church on Sundays or whenever they do that. But then to do it on Wednesday morning as the whole upper school or middle school or lower school uh, is just, it's a great opportunity to grow in our faith in that. In and that I way. think to add to that too, just having come from the perspective of being a student here as mm -hmm. well, to have the opportunity to do that alongside yes. your teachers, mm -hmm. your coaches, those who mentor you and your peers is a really unique situation that we do have here. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I feel like at Santa Fe to that point is where I learned, oh, my friends are not just people that I hang out with and have a good time. My friends should be people that I have spiritual conversations with, that I share burdens with, mm. that you know, will pray for me. Like, what does Christian community look like? And the corporate worship aspect is a, a really big part of that, mm -hmm. I think. Um, I might add, too, and I'm curious what you think, because, and, and we'll get into, like, you know, people's different chapel experiences and what it looks like, but um, there is something about modeling and developing spiritual disciplines that we hope students will take with them that kind of mark the life of a believer, mm -hmm. right? And I think, I feel like, I'm curious what you think, but, you know, having a regular chapel routine and the pieces of it sort of model that. I think it's absolutely the way to establish a habit, too. I mean, not only for students here at school, but even in their lives outside of school. Mm -hmm. And I think also having the opportunity as they establish that habit to get to know a variety of different speakers who are speaking to them. You go to church and you generally probably have the same pastor, which is yeah. amazing. Yeah. You might mm -hmm. have a guest speaker come in every once in a while, but focusing here on giving the opportunity for kids to learn from a variety of different people, some who may feel great for them to learn by, and some it may be challenging, some may be encouraging. So I think that's the other aspect of building that habit of yeah. having that be a part of your life. Yeah. 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 Very cool. So why don't, just for someone who doesn't understand how our chapel works, like give some of the basic overview. How often do we do it? What does it look like? You know? Yeah. What? So, so chapels, I don't know. I don't, I don't know where the format came from. It feels a little bit like a student led service. Um, we have our worship at the beginning, maybe some announcements uh, to go with that. Uh, and then a time with our speaker, uh, maybe another song or two. And then we, we let out to our chapel groups where they break down into smaller groups with teachers and have discussions based on what that uh, discussion or that, that talk was that day. Um, so I don't know, would you want to maybe reframe that? And I think, I think that basic outline of what chapel looks like is absolutely true and has been true for a long time. Mm -hmm. I think some of the things we've watched morph over the years are how we go at that. Do we have a specific theme? Do we have right. special themes? Yeah. How do we decide on the themes? Yeah. So these are all things that have morphed a little bit over the years as we try and bring to the student body we have here this particular year the best that we can. Um, and then, of course, there are special chapels that happen every once yeah. in a while. Yeah. Um, there might be something that's more of an assembly. Maybe right. it's not as much a chapel because it's more focused on school things that are yep. going on. Um, mm -hmm. But still, that, that time frame remains for students to take that time out of the day, stop in the middle of calculus and chemistry, yeah. and give some time to Jesus. Yeah, which I think, and I've heard you talk about this before too, including recently about the value of having an opportunity in the middle of your busyness, in the middle of your focus day, um, to say, hey, we actually have carved out a time for some spiritual focus. Mm -hmm. And again, like we want that modeled for kids so that when they leave, they don't think, 
you know, well, the work day is the work day. And, you know, either before the day or after the day, maybe I'll have some God time. Mm -hmm. Like that can happen at any point in time, Mm -hmm. right? It should be integrated throughout, Mm -hmm. um, which I think is cool. I love the idea of like just taking a breath, right? Mm -hmm. Of that chapel's not a time of like, okay, I need to just sit down and it's another class. Ideally, it's a breath of fresh air to be like, yes, this is the, the middle of the week kind of that charge the spiritual batteries and, and, and enjoy some time with the community and then kind of move on to the rest of the week. That would be, that would be ideal if that was the the thought behind, you know, students came in. Yeah. Um, So speaking a little more about worship and corporate worship, you know, what is the value for a kid of standing next to their friend and singing to God? You know, one of the things I think of, um, when I am involved in worship myself is, because it, it's, it's very difficult to do this, but just to kind of, even though you're involved with everyone there, it's really an audience of one. We oftentimes think of ourselves as being in the audience, like we're the ones receiving, we've got a band up there playing and, and we're the audience who are appreciating how well they're playing and singing and doing all that. But really the audience is God. And if we kind of find our focus in that and say like, how can I, how can I just like kind of let go of what's going on in life right now to just give glory to him and, and, and to enjoy that opportunity to hear people singing next to me or being a part of that. And so that's why, that's why we really do appreciate it when students can turn off their phones or, you know, leave them in the classroom at their, at their chapel groups. Um, uh, not kind of like, even if they're, even if they're not into that part of what's going on, just to allow the people next to them to, to be involved in that worship, because it is, it's an audience of one. And I think that's important to remember. I think the idea of worship in a corporate setting at school yeah. is so unique. Mm-hmm. It's so unique. And there are some students who love singing as worship. There are some who don't really like to sing. But the concept of taking that time before we're about to go into this this time frame of hearing the speaker to, as John mentioned, turn it all off and give your mind a chance to reflect on the Lord, who's the one we're really committing this time to. And then to be doing that with all the people around you, it's a powerful thing to do with others as well. And I think our students have the opportunity to experience that on retreats Mm -hmm. um, once a year and and maybe at their churches, but with this family, with this Santa Fe Christian family who you're a part of, um, to become involved in that moment of worship together, it's a really unique privilege. So it's an opportunity for humility to, you know, to drop that mask and just be authentic with God and, and who you are in his presence. So a couple things I think important to note. One, uh, the, the third, the third head of this three headed, I don't want to say monster, three headed no. angel. I don't know. Um, <laughs> is Mark Andriani. Yes. Uh, who leads the worship. I know leads the chapel development class with you guys yes. as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll talk about that in a sec, but it yeah, does an amazing job. Absolutely. Uh, with, with Very worship. thankful to have him. Yes. Yeah. They say that the camera only fits two guests. So, <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> so, Mark, Mark you know, we think of you being right here yeah, with us. That's right. Um, uh, and secondly, you mentioned the chapel groups, which is also something kind of newer that kind of came out of COVID. Mm-hmm. What's the thought behind those? I think, you know, the thought during COVID was we need a place to gather in smaller groups Mm -hmm. so we don't, you know, make anything, make anyone upset. Um, I think what has grown out of that, though, and the huge blessing that's come out of it is it's given our students a place to share some thoughts, to be vulnerable, to encourage each other. And so we're not just going straight from this last worship song in chapel to boom, now you're back into class. There's a little bit of time for your thoughts to come down a little bit, for you to absorb what you just heard a little bit, have a little discussion. Mm -hmm. Maybe sometimes you're not part of the discussion. Maybe sometimes you're just listening. But I think it's a really important chance for students who maybe wouldn't speak in a larger group are now in a smaller group with a teacher who's their advisor sharing some thoughts thoughts about chapel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another... I know for me, important part of my walk has been that small group. Like there's a couple small groups that have been really transformational. So, you know, if a kid catches a vision for that, it's, mm-hmm. it's awesome. Maybe you could share a little bit about some of the standout chapels over the last couple of years that you can remember, um, just to kind of give people a sense of, of what types of speakers there are, maybe even what you're looking for in a speaker. That'd be helpful. I think. I think one of the standouts for me, and this is a type of chapel we have, is we we have so many amazing speakers, pastors, 
in our community, right? Yeah. Right around us, churches that many of our kids might even attend. Uh, Chris Hilkin, who is currently mm-hmm. the lead mm-hmm. pastor at College Avenue Baptist Church, was at North Coast Church before, has spoken at Hume Lake, Forest Home, all these camps. Someone that many of the kids have seen in other settings has been kind of a regular type of chapel speaker who we've had year after year. He has an amazing way to connect with kids and he shares vulnerably from his heart about his yeah. own story and yeah. what he's walking through. And I think our kids really appreciate that. Our students like to hear it's not all rainbows and unicorns. Yeah. There's there's some hard stuff in life, even mm-hmm. as a Christian. And so I would say we have several speakers who over the years have become that for us. They have, they're kind of core speakers we know our kids relate to, and they're from our community, so they know what it looks like here, and they come in and give a great message each year. We've had... Uh, great on-campus speakers from Bible Department and other places come in. We have had uh, great pastors from the area who've come in and shared throughout the years. Um, And then, you know, people from all different walks of life. Um, This last year we had a pro skateboarder, you know, come in and uh, he was awesome and just loved the Lord. Um, But we've, we've even had, um, you know, Bob Goff, I think has has he been here like twice? Yeah. He's been here four times. And four times. And secret point, I'm in conversations about next year. So Uh we'll see. Okay. Okay. All right. Hush, hush. Hey, don't tell anybody if you're hearing this up there. Which is, you know, might just be my wife listening. So, of course, hun, please keep yeah. that quiet. Keep it quiet. Um, so, the uh, a couple, I, I know things that have have stood out to me in the past too. Just the the range of speakers that you're able to get. Sometimes it's really famous people. We've had, you know, professional football players. We've had, but sometimes it's people who nobody knows who just have an amazing story. Um, you know, we had this past year a woman shared her story of being sex trafficked. Mm-hmm. You know, this was in yeah. the upper school, mm-hmm. to be clear. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, there's there's age appropriateness. Yep. The lower school, by the way, you two both are focused on upper school chapel. So mm-hmm. we should make that clear yep. to our, our listeners. The lower school chapel looks very different from middle school, looks mm-hmm. very different from upper school. True. Um, but some of those real stories of hardship that maybe challenge our kids who are you know, theologically, they get it in their heads. And then when they hear from someone who had to go through something horrific, um, it gives it a little more of a, gosh, that it, that's harder sometimes mm-hmm. than, it, than it is in my head, yep. you know, um, which I really appreciate. I know, Amy, you in particular are the one who really finds the speakers. Mm-hmm. You've done an amazing yep. job of that. Thank you. Um, so thank you. And then, John, you run the chapel development class with Mark. Yes. So tell us a little bit about what that is. Yeah, so uh, we get a group of students together, um, from and it is a classroom time. Uh, we meet Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And it's all basically set up around chapel uh, in terms of the production of it. So Mondays, we'll meet and talk about what this week's chapel is going to look like. And we kind of put all those things together. Who's going to be playing in the band? Uh, who's working the soundboard that week? And, and things like that. And get that all set up. And then, we, you know, we usually do like a devotion or something together on Mondays, which is our shorter class. Uh, Wednesday, we meet before chapel and uh, we will we'll meet up in a classroom again go over what the day is going to look like have some donuts uh, some prayer and then we head down and then it's just work and we work right through into that class into chapel and through chapel producing it setting up everything on the stage and making sure everything's ready to roll uh, for chapel and then friday we kind of break it down uh, maybe a little bit more than we you know students do maybe in chapel Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, in the chapel groups um, because we really want to like kind of tear it apart down to the nuts and bolts and be like what worked what didn't what can we do better Um, and then we fit in amazing amounts of great theological conversations in that class as well, uh, which is yeah. really fun too. So, yeah. uh, and he, he's he's being a, a little bit shy. I mean, his students are worshiping on the worship team. They're yeah. running oh, yeah. sound and PowerPoint. Yeah. They're doing tech work. So they are really the people all behind the scenes of the whole process. And they're the ones really who make it, it happen. The 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 di- most difficult week for me is week one uh, when we get back to school because so much of that falls on me and, and getting them in. But yeah. once we even get rolling into week two and three, they just start taking more and more until they're running the whole thing. And I'm just there as... Yeah kind of a, it, a figurehead it, uh, a little more than a figurehead <laughs> but i i also again shout out to mark it's neat yes. to watch the worship group like at the start of the year mark mm-hmm. is doing a lot of the singing and playing and over the course of the year to watch him kind of pull back and let the kids yes. come out and lead that is is also uh pretty neat okay awesome. i i have a couple of of questions i'm gonna pose to you and um as much as we all think the chapel program is great i know we're always all thinking about you know 
what, what are our kids, how are our kids experiencing it? Kids change, mm-hmm. the culture changes, and you guys do a great job of adapting. But sometimes like people come in and ask questions about why do we do this? Why do we do that? So I'm going to throw a couple of kind of scenarios at you. Yeah. So how would you encourage a student or answer, you know, some of these questions? So the first one, um, I've been here since kindergarten. I'm now in 11th grade. I've been to hundreds of chapels. Um, it's just really repetitive. I don't really want to go anymore. Mm-hmm. Right. What would you say? I'll, I'll take this one. I actually had a few alum at my house last night and was chatting with them a little bit about chapel. Some of them are in colleges now where they have chapels, some are not. So yeah. just talking about that experience and, and many who had been here a long time. And I think one of the most important things to remember is sometimes you are going to hear a similar message or a similar story. Mm-hmm. But what you're going to hear and what you're going to do with it in second grade is so different than what God has for you in eighth grade or in 11th grade or even as a senior in high school. And so I think keeping that mindset of what does God have for me this week Mm -hmm. is so important because it changes. It changes over time, even if there are similar themes that you might hear within the chapel setting. Yeah. And I'll tag on to that and just say that, you know, growing up in partially uh, some Christian schools for just a couple of years, not most of my uh, time in, in, you know, high school and junior high and whatever was, was public. Uh, but then in college we did chapel three times a week mm-hmm. and then in seminary did that, you know, once a week and then church and everything on top of that. And it's very interesting because I, I remember in my freshman year, somewhere in there as I'm going again to three chapels a week, I, I just started developing a very critical spirit mm. and I'd leave chapel and I was just like, I didn't like this and I didn't like that. And this was the thing I, he didn't do this right. And I just realized that's not the spirit that I want to hold in my heart. And so I just had to start saying like, what, what is good? There's gotta be like, I'm just missing the good because I'm so critical of things. And I know that that's a very easy thing to fall into. And so my encouragement to myself, you know, and to others is, is just like, where are those, those great things that are going to come out of this? And yeah, there's always going to be something here and there that we disagree with, or that we think maybe could have been articulated better, or maybe, you know, this person was wearing, you know, a turtleneck that really bothered us. And we had just the hardest time just like listening, because what a strange thing to wear. Um, but in that, um, like the heart of Jesus is to get beyond, what's on the outside and, and the clunkiness of who we are as humans and to really get to the heart of, of what are they saying? And, and can we buy into a little bit of the, the truth that they're giving to us to say like, you know what, that's something I can actually apply to my life. And, and so anyway, I think that's a, a, a good heart place to be like, to put aside the critical and to just accept that there's some really good things coming. Right. Which is, which is a pretty important life skill. It is. <laughs> and I think sometimes kids think, you know, well, I'll graduate, I'll, I'll get on from Santa Fe and, you know, then I'll never have to deal with this kind of stuff again. Well, well that's not really true. I no. mean, you know, there's yeah. lots of areas in your life where things can be repetitive. Uh, hopefully as a believer, I mean, you know, I've been going to church for 35 years. I've heard sermons on the same, yep, <laughs> same absolutely. topics. And, mm-hmm. um, I do think to Amy's point, that question of, well, what is it that God has for me today? You know, how can I use this in a way yes. that is productive or new or different? And to be is, looking out for others yeah. too. I mean, yeah. I hear what John's saying. Yeah. And I think one of the discussions we many times will have with the chapel group is maybe this didn't meet you, but who out there right. needed yeah, to hear this? Right. They could right. be one of your dearest yeah. friends. Yeah. So to kind of have that mind That's perspective, of point. God's going to use this time. It might be for me. It might be for someone sitting next to me, but how can yeah. I be a part of this community in that? I'd love that. I, I remember, I remember one year where we had a speaker and I think both of us were kind of on the edge of our seats like, Oh boy, who did we just bring in? <laughs> and at the Which end only of it, very occasionally yeah. only very occasionally right. happens, but, but it all, all, by the end we were both like, okay, that was really good actually. But the people who went up at the end to talk to him mm-hmm. were people, students that we would never mm-hmm. think of coming up to a normal chapel speaker. And they just heard that heart and that, that grabbed a hold of them. And I, and I think both of us talked about it after it's like, and that's why, you know, it's good to have yeah. a wide variety of speakers yeah. come in. It's not going to always fit everybody, but man, it's great to see that that touched some people and that they wanted to connect with this person. So. Yeah. yeah. And we have to keep that in mind too. Yeah. And not that we're grading our chapels. But as we're trying to figure out who to bring in, trying to think about all the different diverse groups of people we have at the school yeah. and how can we meet everyone, you know, and we yeah. can't each yeah. time, yeah. but hopefully it hits someone. Well, I know I'm really good at listening to a sermon and thinking through all the people I know who right. it's really good. <laughs> exactly. <for. laughs> yes. So uh, I'm, I'm working on that. Um, John, you kind of, you kind of talked a little bit about this, but mm. um, 
you know, kids may leave a chapel and think, I totally disagreed with this thing. I can't believe that. How could the school bring somebody in mm-hmm. that would say this thing, right? Mm-hmm. What would you respond to that? Yeah. I think it's good to be challenged, mm-hmm. and I think it's good for us to get out of maybe the the bubble of our comfort. I think um, today we live in a world that seems like it's so... Two, you know, there's such two sides that, that hate each other and there's so much middle ground. There's so many opportunities for us to step into the shoes of other people and to view things from a different uh, angle. And maybe we don't agree with it, but to actually listen to someone and to, and again, it's a life skill. How can I understand their side so that I can at least say, I've heard your side and I appreciate it. And thank you for sharing that. I don't agree with that. This tests my, you know, my critical thinking skills of saying like, here's why I don't agree yeah. with that. But in the end, I appreciate your voice. I appreciate who you are and the fact that you were willing to get up on a stage and share that in front of this, you know, uh, community. And and so, you know, thank you, even though it may not be something in the end that I that I agree with. Yeah, I'll I'll add to mm-hmm. and Amy. So you you actually spend a lot of time vetting speakers, mm-hmm. right? You mm-hmm. would, why don't you talk about that process? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, there'll often be people that we know, but let's say there's a new speaker, someone recommends, mm-hmm. and we love getting recommendations. I have students, parents, alumni. I have so many people who come and say, hey, I just heard this person speak. So the process starts with just a meeting. I yeah. get together with a person. I have a chance to get to know them. If there's someone from far away, we watch a lot of videos and, mm-hmm. and see where they're at. But over time, usually at least two to three times that I'm meeting with them to get to know them a little bit, and then also to share a little bit with them about who we are, because not everybody's a match. Yeah. And I think to make sure, just as we do with maybe making sure our community matches what we're doing here, I want to make sure our speakers are going to match being able to, to share with our students. Yeah. And so getting together with them, having those introductory conversations, but then really speaking with them about what are you going to share this year? Yes, we want it to kind of fit our theme and fit our students, but we also want to take care of our speakers and yeah. make sure they're sharing something right. that they're right. really passionate about as well, yeah. because we know that makes for the best chapel. So a lot of time, a lot of conversation, many of them will often come to even watch a chapel before they come to speak at it so that they can get a feel for what's going yeah. on too. So there's a big, there is a big sort of vetting match process, mm-hmm. which I know takes a lot of time. Mm-hmm. Um, and that said, like, yes, sometimes a speaker might say something that we didn't expect. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important for kids and families to remember too that, um, you know, it, it's okay sometimes to be exposed to an idea and disagree with it. Yeah. Like yeah. that's not the end of the world. Now, obviously there's certain things, you know, we, we want to make sure all our speakers fit within our Christian faith. And, mm-hmm. um, but you know, sometimes a little bit of that question sparking, that leads to awesome conversations, right? Like you mentioned those moments where someone has said something and it's like, oh man, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And there's been great conversations that that have come out of that and God can use that um, too, which I think is important. And and I might just add to that too. I I think, you know, one of the things I look at, I've shared this with Amy many times and Mark even probably more, uh, Mark Andriani. Uh, But, you know, I look for, are they biblically sound and Mm -hmm. they connect with our students? Mm -hmm. And I've been kind of surprised sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit, uh, distant from our student uh, age, you know, uh, group there. Thirty six is not that. <laughs> you know, I appreciate that. Thank yeah. you. I'm actually thirty five, but okay, no, sorry, fifty one yeah. <laughs> to be uh, clear and honest. Um, but uh, uh, you know, I'll come back from a chapel sometimes, and I'll just be like, "Wow, that was so awesome, so amazing." And it's just I find from the students that didn't connect with them. Yeah. And so you know, we have that conversation about like, well, maybe maybe this person, you know, we kind of hang hang off on for a year, come back to them or whatever, um, and then. There's other times where I'm kind of like, okay, yeah, that was all right. And the students are like, that was great. Yeah. Best chapel yeah. ever. And I'm like, you know, tell me more. And, and then it's like, okay, this is great. This is someone who really connected. And, and they did have some, you know, biblical thoughts that were, you know, maybe a little bit different from what I might think, but still that was the basis of what they yeah. were sharing. And I think that's important because and it is chapel. It is really interesting to see why, because I think in a culture where entertainment has such a high yes. value, yep. mm-hmm. we yep. often think that's all the students are going to think is great. But to be honest, some of the speakers and chapels where the students have been most impacted is when a person's just real. Yep. I've been most impacted hearing students speak about just someone speaking very normally, everyday life, but from the word of God, like Mm -hmm. John said, Mm -hmm. and just connecting with them on a heart level. Yeah. Um, to that, to that point, I want to actually spend a little more time on that because we are in this interesting era where, you know, kids have a lot of their attention is 
taken by a lot of yep. things. And so a kid might say, well, chapel's just long. Mm-hmm. You know, what, what would your response be to that? I think I'm going to go back to where we talked about building that habit of just, just yeah. taking mm-hmm. a moment. That doesn't happen in a 10 minute Devo. Yeah. It doesn't. I mean, we've had lots of conversations even about how do we create space for them to come down what they just had. They may have had the most important test of their whole semester, the, right. the, the class yeah. before. So mm-hmm. how do we create that space? And for some of them, it may seem long on some days yeah. mm-hmm. because we are giving space to worship, to let your thoughts settle, then to listen. The speaker's going to give an introduction first, then they're getting into the meat of their content. But I, I think it's important. I think we have yeah. to learn to do that, especially today when everything is so immediate everything's so instantly gratified to have to just let your body come down for a little bit it's a huge habit to teach and i think it's necessary yeah i think it's a good thing that we brought in the chapel groups right because that takes up a little bit of that of that time so it doesn't drag on we don't have speakers going for 45 minutes or an hour we have our you know songs up front and and whatever announcements and then we try to keep it to about 25 minutes which i think and again um, you know, times change, right? Yeah. And we have to be uh, aware Responsive, that times yeah. d- do change. Uh, but I think 25 minutes for a, a ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th grader is, a, is an acceptable time to be able to be attentive and to sit still. Um, that said, I know for some chapels the, it, when it's engaging, it just goes by yeah. like, you know, 25 right. minutes can fly by. But if it's not really hitting you where you're at, or maybe you have that test next period that you're thinking of, and you're like, I just want to get out of here so I can go over my flashcards and you know get ready, that, that's tough, right? And it uh, and it can definitely take away from the experience. Yeah, but also important skill. And I think yes, you know, God doesn't always speak in ten minute windows, right? right. I mean, um, mm-hmm. and that's an important thing to teach kids. Uh, one other one I hear um, a lot sometimes, you know, especially when, like you mentioned, when a speaker gets really real and authentic, those are the best. And I totally agree. Um, and there's a group of kids that will sometimes say, you know, gosh, um, that was really emotional. Mm -hmm. It hit on something really hard for me. I don't want to have to hear those kinds of hard stories or those emotional things. Uh, how would you respond Mm -hmm. to that? I would encourage them to keep working on hearing them mm-hmm. because I think that's when God changes our hearts the most. And th- there may be times when something's hitting too close to home, and that does happen with some of our students, and, and that's okay. But I think to, to walk through that and then maybe to process it with an yeah. adult, maybe it's your travel group leader, maybe it's a parent at home, maybe it's a friend, but I think those are important things to walk through. You know, we also have been working on offering the opportunity for students with many of our speakers to meet with them in even smaller mm-hmm. groups after the chapel's over. We have a time up in the cafe. Sometimes there's 10 kids, sometimes there's 20, mm-hmm. but to have a chance. So maybe if there was something that hit you really hard, you're going to have that opportunity to speak with someone who maybe had some of the same emotions and feelings in their mm-hmm. own life. That's invaluable. Yeah. That that That's an opportunity we're offering, and that's going to create growth, not only in them as a person, but in their faith, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I, I think there's... Uh a sense to where we get really comfortable with chapel time. And I did talk about, you know, coming in and just taking a breath and, and just relaxing and, and letting the Lord kind of speak to you. But sometimes it's not relaxing, right? Yeah. Sometimes yeah. it's a little bit like in your mm-hmm. face and it's like, there's some things that are coming our way. Like you talked about the, the gal who came in and shared about being sex trafficked. I mean, that's not one where you just kind of like, wow, this is just beautiful. Wow. Yeah. What a wonderful, peaceful right. time. That's, that's a hard thing to think through and deal with. And so, um, it is. It's more than just that breath of fresh air. It's an opportunity to kind of maybe do a little wrestling with, with God and with your spirit, and 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 that is not always comfortable, right? Yeah. And and growth and and uh, change are not comfortable. So um, it is. It's a it's a it's a difficult place to be in. I I hear that for sure, um, and and I think that some of our most powerful chapels are going to be very difficult for some of our students to, yeah. to kind of Absolutely. think through and listen to. Yeah. And, and I, I mean, I, I will affirm both those responses. I'll, I'll note that, um, we have in the last couple of years, especially tried to do a good job of, if we know there's a really heavy topic mm-hmm. or a yeah. topic that might hit on someone's past, you know, we don't know all the experiences of all our right. kids and families where we'll send an email notice out about a week ahead of time to kids and families. And if there really is, you know, something that um, is just not the right timing for a, a kid in a situation, yeah. uh, they they can choose not to go to that one. But that said, um, you know, 
I kind of agree. Our job is not always to avoid the hard feelings. Um, You know, it's good for kids to have to think through some of those things. And that is where some of the growth comes. I mean, not that we're trying to, you know, every chapel is this big, heavy, um, but some of those stories are, are, um, are pretty powerful. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's, it's a a good, again, a good skill to be able to, to sit in that for a bit and uh, learn where to put it. Cause it's only going to get harder when they leave here. I think. And to be honest, I think some of those chapels have really awakened passions in some of our students mm-hmm, for where mm-hmm. they might want to serve or be involved. Yeah. You know, we we had someone come and speak last year that was just talking about kind of world hunger and yeah. places in the world that have nothing. And and I think that there are a lot of opportunities at Santa Fe to do that. But I think chapel is another one where yeah. kids eyes are opened to something gosh, maybe this is something I would really love to pursue yeah. in my own life. Yeah. yeah, I know we've, you know, out, as a result of those chapels, we've gotten involved in the women's shelters mm-hmm. around San Diego. We're actually investigating a trip with... Um, um, Convoy of Hope. We're actually investigating a trip with Convoy of Hope, who came and talked about world hunger. Um, San Diego Rescue Mission is another one. Mm-hmm. I was just actually recently working on our partnership for the upcoming year with them. And a lot of that has come out of chapel, um, which, which has been pretty neat. Okay. I know we don't have too much time left. Um, for each of you, what's your favorite part about the chapel process and what's the hardest part about it for you? Mm. I think my very favorite part of the chapel process, and it's actually amazing to think sometimes that it's part of my job to go get to know people who may be sharing with the kid, um, or a student. I'm going to start over. I think the hardest part of the chapel process for me is feeling a little bit of the responsibility of who I'm going to put on a stage in front of all these students Mm. and their families. I want to make sure it is someone that's speaking soundly from the Bible and it is someone who's going to connect with the students. But the other side of the coin and the best part of chapel for me is when I see a student really feel connected with that speaker and there's kind of a life change that happens. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there are students who actually end up being in contact. They might email the speaker or, you know, vice versa as that conversation happens between them after chapel and there's life change that happens there. And I couldn't ask to be a part of anything else that did that on a personal note. I love getting to worship every yeah. Wednesday mm-hmm. um, with with my colleagues, mm-hmm. yeah. with students who yeah. I feel like are a huge part of my life. It's an amazing piece of a work day, of a school day for a student to, to take that time as yeah. well. It's awesome. Uh, I would say the highlights are definitely the, the team that I get to work with. Um, with you, with Mark, and then with the students. And, uh, you know, I mean, that that chapel class is kind of interesting because we don't do a full turnover every year. We have some students who stay around mm-hmm. and who help out from year to year. And it's great just forming those, um, you know, a couple years, three years relationships and, and just doing life together, doing chapel together. Uh, and and worship is a huge part of that. And, I, and I'm always hearing some great, great uh, messages as well. Um, I think the, the hardest and di- most difficult part for me is when we will have like just three amazing chapels in a row where, you know, you hear kids saying, you know, best chapel this year, yeah. best chapel ever. And then a couple weeks later, you'll catch someone saying like, I just feel like this year's chapels just haven't been as good <laughs> as normal. And I'm just like, yeah. what in the world? Uh, so that, that's tough. But, you know, it's kind of like, what have you done lately? And, yeah. and it's it's just kind of, it's who we are, right? That's part of humanity. Yeah. So and, and I try to remind people too, I, I think there's, I'll, I'll say thank you. I think there's a little bit of an underappreciation for you guys are doing 35 to 40 of these a year. I mean, that is a lot. I mean, there's only so many speakers we can get. It, it's 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 a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and you do a really good job with it. Well, thank you. Um, and thank it's you. it's it's really I know it's a big chunk of your time. And but it's such a huge central piece of our program here. And mm-hmm. You know, for the two of us that went here, yeah, that's uh, right. You yeah. know, we have a lot of memories. I never heard any chapels so, when I was cleaning overnight those, cleaning uh, the garbage. Okay, garbage yeah. interesting. Yeah. Um, uh, but so, thank you for the work yeah. that you both do with with our kids and and on behalf of our Lord. Yeah. Well, one more shout out, if mm-hmm. I may. Uh, not officially a part of the team, but John Salyer yeah. consistently yep. yes. records, live streams our chapel. Yes. And I only bring that up not only to thank him, but also I think a huge piece of the chapel program can also happen at home. Yes. I'm so I glad you brought this up. Yeah. There, there's not time for every parent to watch every chapel or listen to every chapel, but I think the opportunity to ask your student about what happened in chapel, ask them what they thought, it, it's a huge privilege for the parents to get to have at home to listen mm-hmm. to. I know I know when we, you know, were on COVID and we aired these episodes every once in a while, some of the parents got a chance to even hear more because it was something they were hearing yeah. around the house. But I think um, just a huge piece of gratitude to John for doing that 
and giving that opportunity for it to become a part of that partnering with the parents. Let's yeah. let's do chapel together yes. too mm-hmm. when you can. Yeah, I, I love that. And just so people know they are, you can watch them all in real time. And they're also all archived on our, our Vimeo page, uh, SFCS on Vimeo. Uh, and then, sorry, John, you're about to jump I, in. I was just going to say, you know, one more um, group of people to kind of prop up and give give their, their dues to is our group of teachers over the last few years who have joined yeah. in to be a part of these chapel groups, because that is not only a time investment, it's a hard investment, mm-hmm. because as they take this smaller group of students from chapel, uh, it's not all always the easiest thing to, to kind of like figure out how are we going to talk through what happened in chapel today or, or even just talk through life. And they do an awesome job week in, week out, caring for those kids, praying for them. And our students are very blessed by having such a, a great group of, uh, of teachers and faculty who just are involved in their lives in that way. Yeah, it's one of the special parts of being a teacher here for sure, yeah. getting to have some of those conversations. So, well, thank you both for being here. Really appreciate having you on. Amy, it's been, you know, three years since we podcasted. <laughs> and now we're face to face. Yeah, and I'm still right about the cereal. Uh. <laughs> uh, but but really grateful for you guys. And uh, for those of you listening at home or watching, thanks for joining us. If it's the first time you've ever seen one of our podcasts, you can catch us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or elsewhere that podcasts are available. You can watch our video podcasts on YouTube. Check us out. We'll see you again soon.